Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. To answer this question, let's take a look at the beta oxidation lesson from my Metabolic Pathways Mastery course. In this course, I walk you through learning all the major metabolic pathways in a step-by-step -step fashion where you only learn a few terms per image, which is a much easier way to learn the metabolic pathways because there's so many terms you need to memorize, and it's much better for your memory if you do it in small chunks. At the end of each lesson, I have a diagram that shows the entire pathway with everything written out. So let's take a look at beta oxidation. In this case, a fatty acid via passive diffusion is going to travel through the outer mitochondrial membrane and then get converted into a fatty acyl-CoA via fatty acyl-CoA synthetase, and then it's going to travel through the inner mitochondrial membrane via the carnitine shuttle. And in this practice question, it said that the carnitine shuttle is no longer working. If this is the case, then fatty acids are not going to be able to get all the way into the mitochondria, thus they're going to start accumulating in the cytosol of each cell. If we take a second look at our answer choices, we can logically assume that that's going to lead to the accumulation of fat droplets in the liver and muscle. Think about it. If these fatty acids are building up in the cytosol of the cell, then they're going to get re-esterified, becoming triacylglycerides, and they're just going to accumulate as fat in those cells. Let's think about the other answer choice options. Answer choice A says that there will be an increase in blood glucose concentration. Actually, we would expect that there would be a decrease in blood glucose concentration because now the cells can't use fatty acids for energy. So, their only alternative would be to use more glucose for energy. For this reason, we'd expect them to draw glucose from the bloodstream. Therefore, answer choice A is not a very good option here. Answer choice C says that there will be an increase in fatty acid synthesis in the liver. If you already have an excess of fatty acids in the bloodstream and accumulating in the tissues, I don't think you're going to want to increase the amount of fatty acids being synthesized. Therefore, C is incorrect. And finally, answer choice D low levels of the long chain fatty acids in the blood. Let's analyze this using Lachatlier's principle. This is my bloodstream, and this is the cell, and I have fatty acids that are traveling into the cell, and these fatty acids are accumulating. According to Lachatlier's principle, we're going to want to push this reaction in the direction that's going to decrease those fatty acids in the cell. Therefore, they're going to start to travel outwards, increasing the concentration in the bloodstream, and slightly decreasing the concentration in the cell, allowing us to balance out this reaction. For this reason, we'd expect there to be high levels of long-chain free fatty acids in the bloodstream. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I would love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon, and we will see you next time.